anti-tank warfare is termed as a countermeasure to the threat of the tank's appearance on the battlefield. It evolved rapidly during World War II, leading to the inclusion of infantry portable weapons such as bazooka, specialized anti-armor aircraft, and self-propelled anti-tank guns. Although, the best solution to counter tank columns is to have tanks of same or superior class. While the huge cost associated with the operation of these machines and use of armor for other roles, pushed the defender to adopt other effective means to counter the threat, and, induct weapons which can take out multiple tanks in a short time. Modern anti-tank warfare is far more different than World War II. In today's warfare anti-tank weapons are completely changed. Further range is considerably increased with the scale of destruction. In this video we will review weapons or systems which are used to defend against armor columns. From the air, tank commander face threats from both fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircrafts. In today's warfare unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs can knock out multiple tanks from a height without risking a pilot. Fixed-wing aircrafts are also known as attack aircraft or close support aircraft. These aircraft support ground troops by making strafing and low-level bombing attacks on enemy armored vehicles and installations. Attack aircraft are typically slower and less maneuverable than air combat fighters, but carry a large and varied load of weapons including automatic cannons, machine guns, rockets, guided missiles, and bombs. They can attack columns well beyond the range of tank weapons. The gunship helicopters armed with ATGMs are one of the biggest threats to modern tanks. The helicopter can position itself where it is not easily detected by a tank and then attack from any quarter, detecting armor units using radar or thermal channel known as FLIR. The advent of fire and forget missiles is the greatest asset of the attack helicopters, which increases its lethality. It can easily engage multiple armor units at standoff ranges. Most helicopter-launched missiles have sufficient range that can be too long for the tank to retaliate with its weapons. Usually a gunship can carry 8 to 16 anti-tank missiles depending on the mission and area of operations. Beside guided missiles, choppers also use unguided rockets to devastate the battlefield at close ranges. The rockets are effective as an area weapon. Further, as a proactive approach helicopters can also lay anti-tank mines. The system is composed of racks on both sides of the helicopter allowing large amounts of landmines to be dispersed quickly. The armed helicopters are fitted with countermeasures suite to include radar and missile detectors, infrared jammers and chaff and flare dispensers, depending on the degree of threat perceived for their own defense and survival. Anti-tank guided missiles fired from the ground are also a serious threat to armor convoys. These missiles are either portable, being carried by infantry personnel, or mounted on APCs or IFVs. Employing an anti-tank missile is a low-cost solution to defend against armor. Although single ATGM can engage individual tanks but when fired multiple missiles at the same time it would be problematic for tanks to defend. These missiles can either engage multiple targets or multiple missiles engage a single tank to defeat an active protection system. It can be directed to a target by several different guidance methods, including laser guiding, television camera, wire guidance. The fire and forget technology of advanced ATGMs, such as the US Javelin and the Israeli Spike, allows a soldier to select the target through an optical or infrared device attached to the missile's launch tube. Once fired, the missile flies to the target without further action from the operator. Most new ATGMs fly at high arcs and can attack their targets from above, avoiding detection and piercing the armament at the weakest point. Artillery in World War II and the post-war era was limited as an area weapon to bombard armor location with HE shells. In recent years a variety of artillery projectiles have been developed specifically to attack tanks, such as US Army 155mm M982 Excalibur, German 155 Smart Artillery Round, Russian Krasnopol Round which is fin-stabilized semi-automatic laser-guided, and Chinese GP-1 and GP-2 Rounds. 
These cannon launch guided projectiles have heat warheads and can attack stationary and moving targets with top attack pattern. Rocket artillery with anti-tank munition is also a crucial threat to armor vehicles. A single rocket contains a number of small munitions designed to attack tanks at ranges of up to 35 kilometers. It can fire mines or sub-munitions. In one form, a rocket projectile bursts in the air above a tank's column, raining down several shaped charges or grenades. These munitions descend by parachute to allow time for target acquisition and attack the thin top armor. These sub-munitions have homing capability. It identifies the tank using IR or millimeter radar. After identification a rocket propellant is fired to shoot the projectile at the tank. The rocket warhead may contain unguided scatter munitions like multiple small anti-tank mines which probably will not penetrate the armor but can damage tracks, leaving the tank immobile and vulnerable. With the number of threats increasing with time and vulnerability of armor units, new strategies are devised on the same level to counter these threats like dedicated air defense units are deployed to provide air cover. Active protection system both soft kill as well as hard kill, is used to block incoming guided missiles. Combat engineering vehicles are part of the column to clear mines. Recce of the area is done before movement and weak spots on the path are identified. In the end, it depends upon the tactics and techniques, for both attacker and defender in armor arena, for mission success.